we've focused on global numbers and local numbers, and I think the challenge is that one of the numbers that doesn't run off everyone's tongue is the fact that more than 50% of cancer can be prevented with what we already know. And so my goal really now is to tell you how we can do that. First, those numbers again, 1.6 million new cases of cancer will be diagnosed this year. They're going to cost our health system about $77 billion and about $120 billion of foregone earnings from the uh, people diagnosed with cancer and the caregivers looking after them. With those numbers globally, and locally and knowing that we could prevent half of this if we acted, it seems to me pretty clear that prevention just has to be our priority. So the other big backdrop locally and globally is the aging population. You've all heard that we've got an aging population. It gives us problems uh, politically for social security and cost of care. But in fact, because cancer is such an age-related disease with the rate going up with age, we're going to double the number of cases in the US diagnosed each year within 35 years. If we just hold the current rates stable and get more older people. And here, you know, 65 used to be old when I was a little kid. Now it's not so old um, as I get closer to it. So we use the cut point 65, and very soon half of all cancer cases will be diagnosed over 65. Um, what are we doing now to prevent those cases? Obesity is linked to at least seven uh, different cancer sites. and. Just like tobacco, where we started with a short list of cancers caused by tobacco, and literally each time the Surgeon General's report updated the cancers caused by smoking, the list got longer as we put more evidence together. I think we're in that same path with uh, obesity and cancer. Some of that being, of course, that we have more childhood obesity, so people are living obese longer and the potential is there to drive more cancer. We've got 13 states where more than 30% of the population are currently obese. We've got a major challenge. Half of endometrial cancer in women is caused by obesity. More than a third of esophageal cancer caused by overweight and obesity. Pancreas, kidney, gallbladder, all uh, more than one in five cases caused by obesity. And of course, <coughs> breast cancer and colon cancer all have clear relations with overweight and obesity. <coughs> Excess energy intake is going to be bad for weight gain, but we can look at components of diet that are beneficial. More fruits and vegetables, more whole grains, clearly reduce cancer risk, and we have um, long-term follow-up studies showing that the uh, American Cancer Society guidelines of healthy diet, avoiding weight gain, and avoiding alcohol can reduce cancer risk by 20 to 40 percent. We have to work to make sure that we change the norms around um, sun exposure in children and the uh, indoor tanning uh, trend that is in fact driving up our melanoma risk. And these exposures, again, in terms of when in life it's sort of the teenage, childhood and teenage exposures to sunburns and tanning actually drives your lifetime risk of melanoma. So we've got to again focus the prevention in the right uh, time point for the maximum benefit for all. So if we act on these causes of cancer, 50% or more could be prevented today. We know what the causes are, we know what our strategies can be, yet we still live in a cancer culture marked by um, weight gain, overweight, obesity, lack of physical activity, this poor diet, 
uh, um, doesn't have enough fruit, vegetables, whole grains, and alcohol intake.